Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, today I'm here with Astro AI. They are very nice. They reached out to me, so it's pretty exciting. It's a big day for the channel. They reached out and asked if I wanted to review a couple of their new meters, and I'm like, heck yes. And I've had them. They sent them out to me, God, a month ago probably, but I've been wrapped up in these amplifier videos and that, and I finally just took a break to uh, review these meters. Here's the thing, when I saw the picture of these meters, then right away it made it look like this Havel test, which is really a Kai Wheats 118. And now I realize that Astro also has a 118. It looks like 118 to me. So I didn't get that one. Now these are like 35 R meters, this Astro AI WH5000A. These are two of the first meters I bought when I started the channel because I wanted. Uh, some good meters that had a lot of functionality, looked like they were made from quality, had uh, good positive reviews. So I bought these two and I've been happy with both of them. This guy seems to be a little bit more the rugged style. This guy has HFE, so you can uh, check the gain of your transistors. So they have different options. 6,000 count. These two meters, one of them is 4,000 count, this one's 2,000 count. I'm going to give these away, I'm going to talk about it at the end of the video. but. Uh, yeah, so thanks, thanks uh, to Astro for sending these out. They just said, hey, do you want them? Yes. Hey, let us know when you uh, post a video. That's it. No, you know, they didn't try to, you know, co you know, coax me or anything like that into saying anything about the uh, meters. They didn't tell me how great they were or anything like that. They just sent them out to me. So they got confidence. They believe in them. And if they test like these guys, you know, then I think they should. I mean, for the cost of a 4,000 count meter being around 20 bucks, pretty amazing. And this one, 2,000 count, 16 bucks. I mean, 16 bucks, for, uh, 20 bucks. I mean, so inexpensive. Hard to s go wrong with something like that, right? And, um, and then you got your 35R meters. So yes, Astro has one of these now. Let's bring the camera over, take a close up of these guys. And let, hey, and by the way, uh, sometimes when I do review videos, I get the feeling I get a few more thumbs down than on other types of videos. And I almost think it's because people are voting whether they like the product or not. And that's not what it's about because YouTube looks at that thumbs up, thumbs down thing as whether or not they like the video and whether or not they're going to share it with other people. So it helps the channel to give a thumbs up, but if you don't like the video, that's another thing altogether. But if you're, but don't vote for the product with the thumbs up or thumbs down. That's not what that's about, okay? Just wanted to make sure you guys are clear on that because yeah, whenever I do reviews, I just notice that happening. So, all right. Hey, thanks guys. We're gonna take a few readings. I don't do a whole bunch of readings like other channels because I'm not checking the calibration. I think that's kind of nuts because I don't see anybody ever catching anybody saying oh those chips aren't calibrated but so i think it's kind of waste i'm just going to show you the differences between the meters and you know pr important features i think so let's do it all right thanks guys we'll see ya all right so this is the meter i bought a while back ago and these are the two new ones they sent me six thousand count four thousand and two thousand and you can see the the outline, the shape of these is different than the original one. So it's uh, because they did have a 4,000, 2,000 count, I think, in a package that looked more like this. So these are new and they're pretty rugged looking. And matter of fact, if you're familiar with the Havel test or the Kiwitz HT118A, they look similar to uh, this package which has been a very good package so uh, let's go ahead and flip them over and, all right so the main thing I think here it says this is 4,000 and this is 2,000 uh, or three and a half digits so now this guy they both have three uh, sampling speeds three times a second which is relatively fast I mean it's that's a good speed for especially for an inexpensive meter now another uh, difference between these two is this one has uh, it uses two tripways and this one uses a nine volt. And actually this one uses a nine volt as well. 
So we'll open them both up. Yeah, from here, uh, battery testing is the one difference this guy has. This one didn't have, this one has live, this one has non-contact, and the live setting is what I believe. So let's open these packages up. Okay, so uh, let's start with this little 4,000 count. Okay, you got your multimeter leads. Okay, your manual. Yeah, uh, nice large size text. It looks like there's pictures to go along with it and a little thank you card. The specs back here. If you're interested, there's the specs for the DC and AC range. There's some specs here. So the range is two nanofarads and there's resolution and it goes up to two millifarads uh, range, which I think it actually goes, well, okay, maybe it's two millifarads. So that's range there. So there we go, and here's that little guy. Wow, it's interesting. It looks a lot like the other meter I showed you, uh, even the back of it. Okay, let's pull open this guy. Wow, they're almost, they're, they're very similar. And oh, here's a non-contact, and it looks like it has a flashlight. So this one has a live setting, that's because it doesn't have this little antenna here. Display's a little bit larger on, on this one, but man, they are very similar in size. I, I think I expected it to be a little bit, you know, more obviously bigger, but... And these leads from outside, they feel fairly soft. Much softer, by the way, than those that last fluke I bought. Okay, I'm sure the same thing here. Let's just look at the spec. Okay, this one goes to four millifarads range, and it has four nanofarad range on this on the low side. Here's your battery test. Look, it's showing you the ohms that it uh, provides as a load for each one of those. That helps you when you're testing batteries, so that batteries tend to float high, you know, when they're not loaded. And as soon as you load them, they they drop down. So you test them with the multimeter, they look good, and then you you know, put them in the product and shortly after it's telling you that it needs a new battery. That's why. All right, so yeah, there's the specs, just kind of showing you the specs. So, uh, you know, DC current's 1.2%, five digits, 1%. So, you know, uh, DC voltage here, 0.5%, that's, you know, a lot of these meters, I think, use the same or similar chipset, so they actually have pretty darn good tolerance for even an inexpensive meter. I'm wondering if it's, it's, I'm sure it's the same probes, but you know what? These guys are, look at that. If you see me open up some of the probes on some those flukes I opened, how they just won't unravel, look at those. So you can tell you know, that they are a lot softer. It's a normal PVC. So, and they have the little caps. They stick on pretty tightly. And those are very sharp tips. Not a real long probe, which is nice. Kind of crazy to have a real long probe with a small meter. So yeah, uh, you know what, these probes are actually different. See how it's hard plastic here and soft here? Look at these, they came with the smaller meter. Okay, same kind of PVC. See how it unravels? No problem there. So it's just your normal PVC, you know. Um, but yeah, these are kind of have the softer material all the way up so I actually kind of like these a little better I think because they just instead of having the hard plastic a little softer up here the tips on those seem to be just a little bit different yeah a little bit shorter uh, very sharp I, I, I mean they're both very sharp Huh. 
so that's the difference between the leads with the different meters okay okay there's the the meter that I purchased that's what it looked like so you know just a pretty large display I mean this the price there's a difference in pricing of course you know I'll list today's price right here on the screen for all three meters nice stiff you know what I the thing with this one the, I like to stand once it's out but you know what I just have a hard time get I can't get fingernails in there I always have to I always have to grab the the leads and pry it open it fits in there so snug and this one also came with the battery thing which picked up a, a part here that I took off a board but uh, yeah so that came with that but and this one has the thing for the magnetic holder this one does not have a, a place to capture your leads where this, uh, these guys do. And the backs of these, yeah, they're going to be very, very similar. But I like this one because it has a nice, easy to grab thing. But like this one, uh, they're, once you open them, they're nice and stiff. You know, they, they work really well. I mean, I don't know what's wrong with some of those more expensive meters, the one with the yellow holster. They seem like they've ruined their stands, but for an inexpensive meter, that's all you need. Look at that, one screw to take out the battery compartment. We'll check, we'll do that too. Wow, battery's in. Okay, you know what? The only one other uh, meter I've ever got was Fluke that did that, that installed the batteries for you. You know, it just occurred to me as I realized that when I opened up this, I didn't find batteries. Now, Okay. Oh look, it's sensing probably this. Oh, that's interesting. It has an L. Oh, well, I didn't mean to get into comparing or testing the products. Oh, look at this. My scope, you can't see it, but it goes to H up there and turns red. So we'll get to that later. <laughs> All right, I'll leave the display on so you can look at it. No bar graph. Uh, you wouldn't, ex well, you know, probably wouldn't expect that on a low cost mirror. Let's see, wow, batteries in both of them, okay. And I'll just go through, they're both on AC right here. You can see the 6,000 counts, we have an extra digit up here, right? So, okay, there's millivolts. Well, actually, okay. So this one has volts AC and DC in the same button. You use function to go between the two. This one had them separated. Then you go to millivolts and you can toggle between the two. And when you go to millivolts on this one, you toggle between the two the same way. Okay, then this button's the same. Ohms or capacitance function. Okay. And then we have diode or, or continuity tester. Okay, so we'll get around to testing that. That's what that looks like. Well, here, let's just, okay, diode mode. I do like the large display. I always like large displays, but that still got, I mean, they both have similar contrast. Okay, so this one has the battery test, so let's just jog through those. And then we go to current. This one had hertz. Okay, so that has hertz. This one doesn't have hertz. It has the battery instead, okay? difference there now we're back in milliamp and it's ac or dc okay then amps ac or dc and by the way when we look down here 10 amps on the big one this one has 250 milliamps this one has 400 milliamps okay and then there's the non-contact voltage that we were at before or live where you can put a probe in and touch it okay take that off the clicky okay this one does not have the non-contact. It's it's a live thing, so we have to put a probe in. Okay, so there you go. Uh, part number is you know M2 for 2,000 count, M4 for 4,000 count, I suppose. And then KOR. I don't know what that is, but they both have KOR. Uh, maybe for hardcore. <laughs> okay, so this one had the uh, the little loop. Where you can put a magnetic holder or you can perch it on a on a screw head you know something like that 
And this one does not have that. They tell you what fuse to get right here, so that's nice. I, you know, they both have CE, and they both have a similar design as far as getting your finger in there. Look at the Kai Waits, by the way. Well, this is a Havel test, but it's the same as the Kai Waits. You can see the design is pretty much the same. And it has a fuse right here. And when you open them, these two look the same, except for the scale is different. Same kind of features in the plastic for rigidity, to make them rigid and strong. So, yeah. Uh, same kind of antenna, this hexagonal kind of shaped thing. This one has the LED here, and this one had it here. But yeah, very similar to the Kiwi's. So, a lot of people like that Kiwi's. Uh, or Havel test the brand name I have it under it comes under different brand names a lot of people like that So I think if you like that you'll like this because it has that nice grip kind of feels good in the hand I mean these meters You know for my hands are pretty small, but you know I Look I almost hide them in my hand, but yeah uh, versus Something like this that just had an hourglass kind of shape. This is a kind of a soft rubber thing that fits on this one too. Same way. These are just a little bit stronger. So, all right, guys. Let's take them apart. All right, before we take them apart, let's go ahead and look at the battery on this one. Since it's easy to get to, let's just take a quick look-see. Might help take off this rubber case too, so... The screw, you know, most meters, uh, even expensive meters, the screws are not captured, you know, captivated in the thing. Uh, I think uh, there are some meters I have that are. I think the Fleur and maybe the uh, Testo, I can't remember, but most meters don't. Now, it does have the metal insert, the brass insert, so that's nice. Uh, yeah, I've, I think I've seen these pie cells before. Uh, I think they're just fine. Okay, I'm going to leave this off while I take it apart. But here, let me get the batteries out. One thing I like to look for, which I suspect I'll find, but one thing I like to look for is see that the circuit board's not right immediately behind. I can see a little bit of circuit board there because that kind of tells me that, you know, if there's a problem with the batteries, they don't leak into the board too easily. Uh, if you leave it stored for a long time with bad batteries, or if there's a problem with the meter that, you know, uh, it doesn't, it, there's electrical isolation between the batteries and the, and the board. So I like to see that. And you can see how this kind of pulls away. So, you know, like that bigger meter, um, it, it's good to tuck it in before you put the case back on. It's just easier that way. So, <laughs> all right. And the other thing I'll tell you, if you grab it, if you grab these up by the display, you can pull them away a little bit easier. Wow, that one actually, once you start, it, it comes off not too much force, not too hard. Okay, that's the other side of that feature there. Yeah, so that's that's what it looks like, kind of soft, pliable. But yeah, it's pretty strong. I mean, it's going to wrap around this thing pretty tight. So, okay, it looks like I have four screws and I'm in. And usually these screws don't go into brass inserts. Most meters, even the more expensive ones, they just go into plastic. I mean, some nice meters have brass inserts everywhere, but you don't find that very often, even in the brand names that some people like a lot. Okay, now as I pull it apart, you can see the deep ridge so that when this goes together, uh, you're not going to get smoke or gas you know it's it's pretty strong it's a strong fit is what i'm saying okay that's interesting look at the case here you can see the little flat things here so that's not weak that's a nice strong thing and then i i'm looking at these features here uh i like to look at the features and you know the shape of this thing's pretty stiff and the way they uh, did these features, okay, there's a brass insert, has this rib that comes up to this. So, and then we have our three spots there that come down on these screws, I think. 
to put pressure. So yeah, it's built very strong. Now, that's a really clean input. We got one fuse here, one fuse here, and look at the size of those MELF resistors, they're huge. Now here's our current shunt right here. You find that in some expensive meters too. You know, I think I, I kind of like that, that uh, instead of having a piece of metal that has to be bent and shaped and cut to the right length, you just put a high precision uh, surface mount resistor in there. So we have our high voltage resistors. Here's our diode protection for our current input. A couple of transistors, more resistors, and a whole bunch of smaller parts with a bunch of transistors up here. Now, I don't see any kind of surge protection. And as a matter of fact, I don't remember looking at the category. Okay, it's category three, so it's not category four. So it does not have a category four rating, which is good, because on an inexpensive meter, you're not gonna use that in a category four area. So why market it that way? Now, here's your antenna that goes up in this little uh, hexagon dome or whatever. And here's your LED that fits up tight in there. Our beeper. And there's our little chip on board with another. This must be for the display. One of them are for the display. I don't know which one. For, with all the lines going up here, I think this one's our onboard chip. Here's our little wires to our display. Okay, I can see it on the board too, a PTC, and I can see it underneath on the other side. But you know what's nice about that guy? Electrical isolation from here to here. This is a small package. So putting it down there electrically isolates the pat, you know, the guy, instead of standing up, it can bend over and that you have to con be concerned about that kind of stuff. Instead, they just stuck on the other side of the board. Now I'm looking for other through hole parts. See, that's a through hole part. There's the silk screen says F1, F2, it says volts, uh, milliamps here, common and amps. So it's just marked. You know, that's nice. Why not put that on the silk screen, right? If you're replacing the fuses, you got the little springs for the, wow, those springs are fairly stiff actually. I don't see any more through holes uh, for other large parts. So it looks like just a single PTC. Now these old transistors that look like transistors, they could be part of the protection scheme or voltage regulation. It looks like there's a a large inductor here might be creating that might be part of a power supply up there I don't know uh, I don't see any control chips but I see transistors and you see all the little small parts up here for uh, either well some of them could be running uh, these the circuits for these two things here looks like there's two three four six screws and I think all we're gonna do is see a display on the other side here, let's see how we take this guy apart. Okay, it looks like the screw is right accessible from the outside for the, you know, I think that's gonna open up this whole middle of the back. Okay. Okay, you just pull a little bit harder. Oh, there it goes. There we go. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I mean, for how thick this is, you'd have to put the battery up here to, Wow, that, that's in there pretty snug. There we go, holy cow. Okay, I see a little circuitry down in there. You know, I don't see these nine volts leak as much as the uh, double A's or triple A's, but yeah, it's pretty isolated compartment and there's just a little chip down there. Uh, so as far as electrical safety goes, it's in a good spot, it's up here in the low voltage section. Okay, so that's how that guy goes. Let's see how we take this thing apart. Wow, this, I'm just wondering. Okay, let's take this off and see what we find. The smaller, even though it's just a little bit smaller, it's like, ah, uh, there we go. It just seems like, you know, the cases are gonna be that much stronger because you got that much more walls and sides versus, you know, open center part. Okay, that's, 
see, how do I take that off? Oh, there we go. Wow, yeah, it just, so this plastic feature, it just snugs all the way around here, so, man, that is a tight fit. Same, same, same material, same thickness, all that kind of stuff. Again, four screws. This thing just feels like I could squish as hard as I could. I don't think I could do anything. I have fairly strong hands, but this thing is small and compact and solid. Just gonna put these in here for now. Man, my fingers just don't work. I don't have any fingernails. Okay. Keep all that stuff separate. Wow, how do you get this thing apart? Again, same kind of thing. You see the deep side walls. Okay, this guy is going to open up a little different because it has a battery stuck to it. That's why the hole. <laughs> Okay, again, you know what? Probably a lot of the same features. I mean, similar construction. See the ridge? And all these little features that it has built in? So, that helps uh, hold on to these guys. And, wow, look at that. It doesn't It's not surprising they'd be built the same. This guy just looks like it went through a hot water wash and shrunk <laughs> but yeah it's a different display chip I mean there's the globs right here and here's a PTC on top of the board on this one I I wonder if they couldn't fit it down there huh I don't I wonder why they didn't put it on the bottom like the other one looks like there's room down there But it looks like the same kind of ceramic fuses on both of them. Same kind of sense resistor. And same large uh, MELF resistors. There's a tantalum capacitor. You know, tantalums are not inexpensive. So I'm a little surprised to see a tantalum capacitor in a meter like this. I'd almost expect to see a small aluminum electrolytic. Well... I think they're pretty cleanly designed. It's about what you expect in an inexpensive meter. I mean, it's probably more than what you'd expect in a meter the price these things come in. Category 3 on both of them. I'm not too sure about that. I mean, they, they might have the isolation. They might have that, but... Yeah, they're not Category 4 for sure. You can see the resistors here. It looks like... They have three of them lined up here. Here they're kind of an L shape. I was looking for the diode for the current protection. There's two here. We got our transistors, a bigger transistor here. Okay, and then our these leads come through and attach right there. So that's just a strain relief. And then the I see the bottoms of the lead soldered right there and it says battery plus minus. And then I see a little transistor up here running up to this display. By the way, I do see 250 volt, 10 amp on the fuse, 250 volt, just like it says up here. So, and yeah, 250 milliamps, 250 volt, 10 amp, 250 volt. Um, just those small ceramic fuses. All right, so I screwed these back in, and I'm going to attempt to put this on. And so I'm going to leave the camera on just because I wanted to see if I could help anybody else take these apart. I think you put the big end in first and then leave the battery compartment off I think it helps and then squeeze the bottom up around and then you have to push these little it, there's a lip that fits down you can see the little lip down in there yeah wow that fits tight and snug so no problem there they, they found their home real quick I thought I might struggle a little bit more and then there's a little lip right there so you just make sure 
everything's snug and then this guy I'm gonna just press this down I probably just pushed like that and it would have pressed in okay so there you go now that screw didn't fall out but I don't think it's captured or is it no it's just a snug fit so it's kind of captured in a, in a sense I guess okay you gotta grab it up here on top and then hinge it down You gotta kind of push it in there, man. That's pretty, I mean, it fits there pretty tight before I even get the screw in. So, yeah, that's, uh, mechanically, I think that was a pretty good design. It has a real snug fit. And, uh, by the way, uh, the back of it, these things protrude out, so it's gonna protect the back. And also, from the front, you can see how the display's probably about a quarter of an inch you know five millimeters or so uh you know deeper than the thing so if it lands it's not if it does this kind of thing you're not going to hurt your display as a matter of fact there's a little plastic thing there i haven't even uh pulled off i didn't even just now notice that okay let's get this guy together all right again i'll go ahead and uh, show you how to put this in this one after the other one I think this one should go in same way just as easy yep just get the bottom part in here this one actually has like a this one actually kind of goes in this direction instead of down this way so you got to get that started on there right it actually kind of goes down in like that there we go. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that. Well, that fits tight. And this one, same kind of thing, but a little bit different. It's got these big levers in here that are going to just snap in. No problem there. So. Yeah, part of the uh, idea of getting one screw kind of connection. A lot of meters are designed that way. I like it. I mean, I like the fact there's only one screw. And again, this one does have the LED up here. Okay, so let's do a few tests. Now, this guy has a Hertz function. Let's go ahead and test that. And here, I took off the caps, or started to anyway. And these guys... They are the type that are uh, four-way split. You know, they're cut in half, so there's four, uh, you know, pies in there. So that helps them kind of fit in snugly, I think. And they do fit in snug. And the other thing is they have nice uh, grips around the edge. You know, there's a little strain relief. That's a little bit on the stiff side, but... And, you know, the handle kind of bends here. So a little... They are a little bit on the stiff side, though. I got to tell you that. Um, and it's also chilly in my lab, which always has something to do with that. Okay, let's go ahead. And I got my generator here. Now, this guy, the spec said 2 megahertz, right? All right, so let's go to hertz right here. Okay, 59.7. So it's picking up uh, the 60 hertz off of this, the noise. And that's what I see when I don't have it turned on. So watch when I turn it on. Then it goes to one kilohertz. This guy set a 1K and this is 0.996. Now remember it was, what was it, five places or something? So basically that's 1K. But also there's a tolerance, right? But that's what that means. Okay, so let's go sine wave and let's go to two meg. Let's just go right there and see if it does it. Okay, 1.99. I'm gonna go to three meg. Nope. Okay. Just wondering. 2.5 maybe? How about 2.3? Nope. You know, it's a 2,000 count. So I think once you go over 2,000, that's the problem. That's why it's 2 meg. Okay. So let's go down to 10 kilohertz just so you see something in the middle. Or, well, it's not in the middle, but you know. So it's, it seems like it's always on the low side. Uh, but 
Okay, I mean, but but just barely, right? Okay, let's go to 20 hertz. Wow, look at that. Okay, I'm going to go to 10 hertz. Jeez. Okay, I'll go to 1 hertz. Well, it's just, okay. <laughs> it, I think it 10 hertz was the small range. Let's go to 2 hertz. All right, so two hertz is okay. One hertz didn't like. <laughs> but, you know, that's pretty darn good range for a meter, right? What do you want? Okay, so um, I'm going to go over to the the big brother over here on hertz just to check that frequency. See if maybe this guy's on the low side. Okay, let's go to... Well, it, this one doesn't do two hertz. Let's go ten. Okay, let's go two k. All right, you know what the problem is, guys. Uh, these leads—they're made for a smaller meter, so they don't have really deep pockets. So they fit here fine, but see how deep the wells are on these? These leads have to go down in there, and they do that for safety, I think, so you can't touch them. These are safe, too, but, yeah, just different design, so, yeah, they won't fit there. All right, let's put them back where they belong. I guess that was a good test just to show that leads don't always fit all the same meters. All right, so here, let's do continuity tests on this guy. Uh... You hear that tone? You know, it's loud enough. It's not real loud. I've got to get... I have a meter. I, I need to uh, review it so I can start using it for... And you know what? If you're doing ohm testing, that's pretty fast. So, sounds good. And it's not too loud. So if you're working somewhere where you don't want to bother people, it's not that loud. But... Yeah, anyway, that's what it sounds like. Okay, let's listen to the other one. And by the way, it defaults to continuity, which is probably nice, because you probably do that more than you do diode check. And, and, uh, same kind of thing. They're pretty short. I didn't notice that the first time, but... That'll work better. Now, that's... Does that sound a little bit louder? Well, I don't know. It's, it's probably the same beeper in them. Now look, you also get a green light. That was interesting. So, yeah, they're both pretty fast. You know, I think this is ridiculous when people do this. When you continuity test, it's a purposeful test. It's like touch, touch, touch. And uh, by the way... One thing I've learned is if you take some uh, alcohol, there's some kind of resid residual film, and you can kind of feel it. It's, it's almost an oil film, but it's not. I mean, there's nothing that comes off, but you can kind of feel it. And someone said, you know, there's several people that have kind of mentioned that when they mold the plastic, that it might be the release agent or something. But I've noticed when you clean that with alcohol, it really makes a difference on how you know how how good that works but if you're checking continuity on a your heads underneath the dashboard of the car is that fast enough for you i think so all right let's try a capacitor i've got a thousand mic cap one millifarad cap now this one's capable of two thousand and four thousand let's just see how fast it can do a large cap Okay, 987. Okay, 994. Pretty close. All right, let's try in circuit diode testing. You got a couple big diodes on each package here. Let's try it out. 
Okay, go to the diode. And it gives a little beep, a little chirp. And these are shock keys, so, yep, pretty low voltage. And if I go reverse polarity, All right, so let's try this guy, diode. Yeah, they're shocky, so that's the right uh, place. But they both do a little chirp and then tell you the voltage. And you know what, let's just see how high of a voltage it can put out. Let's go to voltage on this guy and check the diode voltage here okay 2.2 volts that's not real high that's uh you know good enough for most diodes and uh, most leds now remember diode testing is for diodes but yes we like to see leds but really the main thing is for diodes when you're troubleshooting that's what you're going to be reading most of the time so let's go dc volts here and read the diode voltage on this one yeah, about 2.1. So, yeah, they both are on the low, low side. I thought this guy with 9-volt battery might go a little higher, but no, the electronics inside, I guess, are designed to both put out just over 2 volts. All right, so let's go ahead and do some LEDs. And I think... Okay, there we go. There's green, if you can see that. Maybe I'll turn away some lights a little bit. There's green. Oh, what was the voltage? No, it doesn't tell me the voltage. And it's not lighting up that color. And it's lighting up the red. That's 1.76. Okay, it's not going to do that clear one. 1.74 on the LED. Now, that's not a bright LED anyway. I don't think this is a bright green one either. 1.8 so it tells you the voltage they break down but not enough juice to light them up let's try this guy I suspect it'll be the same kind of thing green no voltage oh not getting voltage on that one either okay nothing on that one nothing yellow I don't know why I have this dim LED in here. Well, this one, you know, this one did measure just slightly lower, huh? And it's a little bit less. Okay, 1.8 on that guy. But yeah, uh, it does tell me the voltage, 1.7, but no light. 0.04 nano. 0.035, yeah, they're the same cap, so that's right, 0 0.04, 0 0.887, 0 0.887, can I get underneath there, and that's a one mic, here, let's try this guy, okay, 0.027, 0 0.023, 0 0.86, I have to reach underneath here, okay, one mic, alright guys, let's do a little DC voltage test, I'm going to start bringing it up just so you can see what it looks like as it goes through the zones, we got three digits, four digits on both, Looks the same. Now, once we go over 2,000, you see we lose a count here. Now, on this one, once we go over 4 volts, we're going to drop one. Up, oh, there we go. We lost a digit. Now, they look the same until... Let's go up to 19 volts. And then we're going to lose a digit on the left. And on the right, we're going to keep it until we go to fourth, uh, 40 volts, right? And then 40 volts, we lose a digit. So that's the difference of 2,000 and 4,000 count meter. Now I've got my leads plugged into this high pot, this insulation meter, set for 1,000 volts. So let's go ahead and see if it passes the test. 
Now we're getting beeps, five mega ohms. Yeah, both meters are beeping. So if I take, let's see, I'll take the lead out of one of them. Just this guy's beeping. And they only go up to 600, so they're not even reading the voltage. So uh, here, let's drop it down to 500 volts. Okay, and right here on my meter in the fluke, it says 525. And yeah, we're pretty much green. So it passes the high voltage test. So a uh, thousand volts are going to beep at you anything over 600, but you know, it's only ready for 600 and I hit it with a thousand. So if that makes you feel any better about the safety, then I hope it does. All right. So this one has a battery tester. So we go nine volts. Wait, before we do that, let's go to voltage here and we're on DC. So, look at 3.34 volts. So that's pretty dead. 3.34. Let's go to this and see what it reads now with a little bit of a load. Uh, two point volts. So, t yeah, and it's even dropping with the load. And see the red light? It's saying, nope, that's no good. So, yeah. Um, now, if if this was almost good and it was reading like 8.8 .8 and it dropped down to 7 volts once you put a load, then you'd know it was a bad battery. But in this case, it was bad whether you measured it here or here. But that's the value. You see how it puts the load and drops the voltage on this. Okay, let's just try a 1.5 volt battery. Well, first, again, let's go DC voltage. Okay, 1.247, uh, 1.16, and it's giving us red light. So, All right, so for the live measurement, come over here, and you only have to plug one probe in, which protects you so that you don't complete a circuit with two test leads. So you can just come over and, and probe. And look at that, that's a neutral side. It gives me a low. Yeah, neutral. This has a slow beep. And then hot. With red light. And it says hi. So you got three different indicators. <laughs> now, if we don't, um, I'm holding the cord and I'm touching this, but if you, if you just want to do this, There we go. So if I go to the hot side, and if I go to the neutral side, or the ground, so, uh, you know, these NCVs are really nice because if you do detect something, it means there's something there. If you don't detect it, you don't want to count on that you still want to try something maybe the next test you do is you go okay i'm going to try this just to make sure and then you go oh yeah okay that's bad i mean that's voltage so this guy can do uh the live voltage test too right okay let's uh put in live test it says live up here now it's only saying l so i'm in the i'm on the hot side now, maybe if I'm on a 220 circuit, I would get H. Maybe that's what it's telling me. Because I get a low for this and then nothing for neutral or ground. Yeah, anyway, that's how that works. All right, let's just test an AC voltage, okay? All right, guys, so there we go. There's a reading a live voltage. I mean, probes in the outlet there. Okay, let's try this guy, get over in the volts. Go to AC and try that. Um, OK, 
Okay, there's AC volts. Okay guys, we're in amp mode and I've got current coming into the 10 amps, out of the common, into the 10 amps here, and out of the common, back to the power supply. So yeah, we're gonna see, and we've got them both set at DC amps, 10 amp range. So let's just see if we can bring it up and watch the current. Okay, there we go. Same as the voltage, you just lose that decimal spot. So, yeah. So, okay. Well, we can't go, you know, too much higher without burning up fuses. So, we we'll go up 10 amps, I guess, right? And then listen to that. You got a beep and an overload. All right, let's try the milliamp range. We're pretty close in current right now. And let's bring it up a little bit. I have to go easy on this thing. Wow. That quickly jumped. You know, this one went overload over 250, right? There we go. I keep on bumping the power supply too fast. So, yeah, once you go over once you go to 200, then even though the fuse is ready for 250, it uh, gives you an overload. But they're pretty close, right? And measurements, close enough, I think, right? All right, guys, I've got all these meters lined up, and I put the Habo test up here, otherwise known as the Kai Wheats, otherwise known as the HT118, because it does come under different names. And guess what? Astro has a version of this now. I think it's the same meter and a red rubber instead of black rubber. <laughs> so they have the red line up and these are 6,000 count meters back here. They go for about 35, 36 bucks, something like that. And like I say, 6,000 count, 4,000 goes for about 20 bucks. I think a little bit less US dollars. And the 2,000 counts like $16, okay? so. I mean, you know, it's a lineup, 16, 20, 35. That's a pretty good lineup. And I think you get a lot for your money for these things. They're, they're robust. Oh, look, I have the backlights on. By the way, these backlights are nice lights. They're nice, evenly lit. Uh, they're nice. I should have shown you a close-up. Sorry about that. They have a hold and a max uh, hold button too. They both do. This one also has a flashlight, by the way. Let me hold that down. Yeah, so you got a flashlight. <laughs> Is it on? <laughs> so, yeah. So, you know, if you're in a furnace room doing things or if you drop something, you know, that might help you. I mean, sure, there's better flashlights. There's your smartphone, uh, things like that. But if you're just taking a voltage reading in your furnace room, maybe you didn't take a phone in with you. Maybe you don't want to hold two things in your hand. So, yeah, I'm not sure how long these backlights are on. I've had them on for few minutes where I've been sitting here looking at them still on but I bought these meters back when I started this channel and I did some reviews I'll put the links below yeah hopefully my video has gotten better uh, but I'm gonna give these two meters away okay I'm gonna give this away to a patreon the 4,000 and the 2,000 I'm gonna give away to a subscriber so to have a chance to win send me an email say you want to win the meter and if you're a patron you happen to miss this video I'll contact you through my Patreon list, okay? You got to do something for my patrons, right? Right. And, you know, by the way, if you want to become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, you can do that. So, pretty cool. Links are below for my Patreon account. And, uh, hey, I want to thank uh, some of my viewers for, uh, for donating money into my PayPal. That was really awesome. And... You know, I should. I need to check with you guys to find out if you want me to give you a shout out. Some people, I've had people in the past say they didn't want their name out there. So, and I've heard that from other channels too. So I need to start asking so I know if I can give you a shout out. Uh, let me know too. Okay. And, and by the way, I try to answer all my comments and that. I've gotten behind. I'm starting to get a lot, and I'm really happy to see other. Hey, the lights went off. The back lights. Nope, they're still on. Uh, anyway, I've started to see other uh, people answering or, you know, corresponding with 
with people commenting below that's really awesome to see those communications picking up sounds like the dogs are going crazy out there if you can hear that oh and i'll try to get um a discount code okay all right so um i'll send that discount code out if i get it in my uh little communications link to all my subscribers so all right guys hey thanks a lot by the way yeah, Patreon is going to get the 4,000 count, and the su subscriber will get the 2,000 count, okay? All right, thanks Astro for sending these, appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.